um, Bruce Patterson from Ammon. Um, and uh, so Ammon has taken a somewhat different uh, approach to this. That's a kind of actually a kind of mix of public and private. Um, and uh, you know, I'll let Bruce talk more about it. But their their approach has been kind of to treat the internet kind of like um, the broadband infrastructure as the road, and then let people privately drive on it. Um, so and and they've come up with some innovative financing methods that he'll he'll begin talking about now. So all right, thank you, Bruce. Well, thank you, and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk to everyone. Tough group to follow, I have to tell you. And I think I'm the only one out of state, right? So, you know, Ammon's in Idaho. You want to know where I'm at, you look west, but you got to look about 2,000 miles and about two hours time difference. So, but I appreciate the chance to talk a little bit about our experience. And that's really what this is about because we're a completely different state, but we have similar problems. You know, that's one thing that I think we fail to recognize sometimes is, you know, we may see a lot of differences, but really we're dealing with the same problems across the country. And broadband's one of those things that's a challenge everywhere. So, Happy to just talk about what we did to try and address our needs. So <clears throat> if you go to the next slide, please. If someone were to ask, this is how we would describe ourselves. Uh, City of Ammon considers themselves an open access infrastructure provider. What that really means is the city does not provide a service. We provide the infrastructure. And so Tim's description was spot on. We provide a road. We do not provide internet. However, what you're going to be interested in is what internet can I get in Ammon and what does it cost? So we have internet packages. The base starts at about 15 by 15 meg. Uh, it'll cost you $16.50 a month. Uh, the city charges that $16.50 a month to each resident to keep their fiber operational. That 15 by 15 meg package is actually available for free from one of our providers. We have four providers in the marketplace. One gig, the least cost is $9.99. So you can get one gig on the in city of Ammon on fiber, no data cap, no contract for $26.50 a month. So that probably leads to some other questions. How did we get here? So it's public infrastructure folks, and that's what we're gonna try and help you to understand. How did we build it? How's it public? How did we get to this pricing? So next slide, please. The Ammon model is really the result, result of two really key challenges that we faced. In the state of Idaho, there is a very large question about a city's authority to build broadband infrastructure. The state statute is silent. And all legal precedent would indicate that in the absence of the state actually telling the city they could build it, we didn't have the authority to build it. The economics are another problem because the city cannot take tax dollars to build this infrastructure and by law we're prohibited from taking water money from the water utility or money from the wastewater or the sewer utility and paying for this. So we have no money. Both of the solutions to these problems were public processes. So the city does have the ability to do improvement districts and that of course requires the support of the community. And those improvement districts could build a fiber optic infrastructure and then the city could operate it as a utility for the benefit of the residents. So that was the solution to the legal authority question. And it actually provided the economic answer too because local improvement districts are created for one purpose, to install an improvement. And so we can borrow money, complete a project, and at the end of the project, the property owners who received the improvement actually pay for it. Now they can pay for it at any time. They can pay for it at the conclusion of the project and pay it in full up front, or they can pay for it over time because the city has the power to go get a municipal bond over very long time periods, 15 to 30 years at very low interest rates and attach that portion of the cost, the portion that was incurred by that property to that property itself. So if the property changes hands, Whoever actually owns that property makes that payment over that number of years. So what that means, folks, is when I gave you those initial numbers, that $26.50 a month, we have literally hundreds of residents in Ammon that take that package, that's what they pay a month. They may have bought a new home 
that that development had fiber from the city when it got built, or they may have participated in an improvement district, have an older home and paid that off. If they're still making that improvement payment, they're actually paying about $46 a month because that improvement payment costs them about another $20 a month until they pay that debt off. So can we go to the next slide? I'd like to emphasize some key things that result of this. It is a true infrastructure utility because it's built for cost of recovery. There's no profit in there. There is no profit. And it's done just for rate of return, recovering the expense over a period of time at minimal interest rates, or you don't even have to pay interest if you just wanna pay for it up front. That's done through the municipal bond fin financing. And the costs are paid by the property owner, which means the city carries no debt. There is no municipal debt associated with it, so that's pretty critical. And we're gonna talk about that just a little bit more. Let me go to our next slide. I'd like to help you understand how we start this. So this is a picture of a website that we maintain online where people sign up and say, if you built fiber in my neighborhood, I would take it. And they get a little pin on their, on the, over their home. So this gives you some idea of areas we haven't built. All the areas in gray are actually all done and connected. We do uh, about three or four neighborhoods every year. We pass about 600 homes a year and connect them. We choose the neighborhood we go to next based on demand. So however, whichever neighborhood has the highest demand based on this map, we'll get fiber built next year. Now the reason we take the highest demand neighborhood is based on mathematics. So can we go to the next slide? Very briefly, I'm gonna rush you through some of this. The cost per connecting the home is based exactly on how many people will take it. So if you have, and these numbers are uh, pulled out of the air somewhat, but they're based in somewhat reality. If you have one home taken in the entire neighborhood and you had to go to that home and it's in the middle of the neighborhood, it would probably cost you $30,000. As soon as I get my second one, that gets cut in half because they share that cost. As soon as I get the third, it drops again. Now there are costs that are specific to each property that they'll pay no matter what. And then there are shared costs, which include the fiber going down the road and those things. So this curve shows you that there's a sweet spot. Can you see it? 50%, 60 percent's better. 70%, you see how it starts to flatten out. So we build in neighborhoods where we get 55, 60%. Otherwise, it's not economically viable, and that's how we get our price down to $3,000 to $3,400 a home to connect. And those homeowners are signing up and agreeing to pay that amount either up front when the project's done or over time through the LID process and the bond process. So hopefully that helps you understand how we're stretching fiber. This is a public process. The community pays for it. The city becomes the facilitator. Now, what we do with this infrastructure can we go to our next slide? Is competition. We have four internet providers. When we started in 2016, one gigabit was between $99 and $109, and you had to sign a one-year contract to get it. Last year in 2019, we, we hit where we're at today. Gigabits available, depending on your provider, from between $9.99 a month and $25 a month. And there are no longer contracts, no data caps whatsoever. You can change your provider in five minutes. So competition is real and that's the consequence it had on price. So you're talking about in three years that type of drop in cost. So that tells you what competition will do in that internet market. Next, next slide please. So I'm just going to summarize the lessons we've learned so that you can get to your questions because I know that's what you really want to do. This is what I would say from the city of Ammon, from the state of Idaho. There's no improvement without participation. Gigi actually opened with this. If you wanna sit and wait for somebody to take care of you, they will, but it's gonna cost a price that's probably not affordable for a large segment of your community. So if you want the improvement, you need to participate. And I think sometimes we fail to realize that we're paying for it already. The question is, do you want to continue paying it the way you are, or do you want to pay into a public infrastructure that's shared by everybody and operated for cost instead of for profit? That's really the question. It was pointed out that sewer and water, we don't have these same challenges, not, not to this extent, getting sewer and water to everybody, 
we don't have these huge divisions. And it's because we treat that infrastructure completely different from the way we treat these private connections. Sure, the, the, the internet is very public, but we all access it through private roads and we pay a heavy toll to do that. Number two, you have to, in, you have to have your own path to invest. If you can invest yourself in your property and pay for your fiber and do it at cost, then that's gonna get you a better outcome and our residents are seeing that. So you invest your own money, you get the benefit. And the third thing I'm gonna say is, you can do it. I have to tell you, we've been told over and over again in Ammon, we started this a decade ago and it's taken us this long to get here and we were told over and over again, you can't do it, you're not smart enough, you don't know how to do it, you can't run these systems, you can't build these systems. Yes, you can. The hardest part about this is consensus. You have to come together as a community and get enough consensus to fund it and you can be successful at it. So that's the lessons we learned. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much for that great presentation, Bruce. Um, so we are gonna now move on to question and answer. And I think we see quite a few here in the, in the chat. Um, so the moderators came up with some of their own, but uh, we'll privilege the audience. Um, Maya, do you want to ask the first question or? Yeah, I can ask the first question. So the first question that we had from the audience came for Kathy and it was just a question about how many households, how many of the households were of English learners were surveyed. I saw that inside the chat. I assume that's, that's going to me. Yep. Um, I can't tell you exact percentage of how many were English learners. What I can tell you is that um, there was an oversampling in 22203, 22204, and 2206 to make sure that we were focusing on those income and families in need. Um, we also made sure that the interviews were conducted in, in English 